Hi guys, welcome to another Living in TV video, David here. Today we are going to see another CID right here in Joburg called the Eden Vale City Improvement District and let's find out what they have been doing for the last 10 years to turn around completely the CBD of Eden Vale. Don't you believe me? Stay tuned because once again this video will blow your mind. Okay guys, very well, so this time we are touching again CIDs in South Africa and we're going to meet another project called the Eden Vale City Improvement District that in the last 10 years a group of spectacular citizens decided to turn around the loomy and gloomy uh, Eden Vale CBD and to take it to another level and make it a nice and livable area for every citizen so they did a lot of impact in their community so in this documentary which is basically one hour we're gonna see the four sides of the story the head of the project the security side of the project the private investment a part of the story and also the business owner side of the story in order to give you guys more information so you can apply it yourself in your city and create an impact in your community stay tuned Hey guys, so welcome uh, to the first interview on this amazing documentary about Eden Vale CID. At the moment, we are with the head of the project, which is Linda McKenzie. Hi Linda, how are you? I'm well in you, David. I'm very good, thank you very much. Linda is such an inspiration. If you guys could hear all the stories that she has to tell you, I'm telling you, you guys will be blown away. So let's start with our first question, Linda. So what makes the Edenville CID uh, uh, different from other precincts? Well, David, a lot of the other precincts are very large corporates um, where they could be donating or paying a levy um, 30, 40,000 rand a month. Mm -hmm. Now for every 10 big corporates that they have, we have to actually now get 50 or 500 people because Edenvale has not got those big corporates. Uh, we rely on the, uh, the property owners, as well as the small businesses, um, to pay the levy so we can do what we have to do. That's, that's, that's really, and I'm telling you guys, the work that has been done here throughout the years is uh, just huge. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a few uh, takes on it because it's just mind blowing, you know, the streets the cleanliness, the, everything is like organized. You guys need to come here and see it for yourself. I'm just giving you guys the like inside the story, which is quite amazing. Okay, so Linda, this takes us to the second question, which, which is why was this CID created and why? Well, in June of 2012, um, our big shopping center up in Greenstone, Greenstone Shopping Center was built. And we had quite a few multiple known brand um, retailers in our area. And with Greenstone, a lot of them left Edenwell CBD to go and actually rent a shop within Greenstone, which actually left Edenwell a totally empty hub, which resulted in decay. It resulted in not being able to pull in new retailers and also the property owners were losing money because they didn't have the right um, retail shops. Mm -hmm. Then of course, then what happened from there was a, a couple of business people, uh, men got together. Um, they started negotiating with the um, And at that stage, well, to the start of the ESIT, um, it was a mandatory levy which the council then built the properties. We were building out 485 uh, properties in Edenwell. And that's how we started off. Unfortunately, then in June of 2018, we had to go voluntary. And um, because of this all happening, is that the relationship between property owners, shop owners, and the ESA board of directors has developed and we have an absolute amazing response from the businesses within Edenville. Okay, Linda, a, a very interesting thing is, tell us about the main challenges and uh, before you started the CID, how it was, what was the, the biggest problems that you needed to eradicate? 
the biggest problem is when we first started with the ESUG, we did a survey to find out what the property owners, what their needs were, what the shop owners needs were. And there were three highlights that came out and the one was the security, the other one was the, the cleanliness and the third one which was a huge problem in Edinburgh was drugs. Mm. Um, because it became that one man uh, hub, it was just dead. A lot of drugs infiltrated Edinburgh. In our first four years of running the ESOT, we had removed a million plus drugs off the street in the CBD. At one stage we had 42 hairdressing salons just in the CBD area, of which 80% was France or illegal trade. There, of course, the EMPD, or their, their drug unit and their dogs, sex, we did regular blitz drives to, in order to combat the drug sales in Edinburgh. And yes, it took us four years. Four years to go eradicate They stole around some of them, but not as vicious as it was then. It's very interesting. I hope you guys are learning a lot. This is quite interesting. So, Linda, I need to understand another thing is, what other events are, are you creating to keep the community involved into the CID? Um, you know, we've always believed that you've got to have interaction from both sides. Mm -hmm. We have created a um, festival of lights over December, where all the shops, we close off roads, we put up Christmas lights, um, we call it a festival of lights, where the shopkeepers could actually put their uh, products out on their pavement because at an event like that we were attracting between five and ten thousand people in the course of the whole day into the evening where they could sell their products. We had, um, we tried to keep it as local as possible of having um, these food trucks and having the Jambanani um, pipe band and making music and having a, a massive beer tent which has just created such a vibe. Mm. And then of course what we also do is like for instance on Mandela Day um, and um, things like that where we, we, we try and go and either do the gardens where we find the community likes to come and get involved as well because they're not just doing it for somebody else, they're doing it for them, themselves and their children. We go and clean parks up, cut the grass and clean the rivers, which is such a fantastic day for a whole family to come up with their children and also teaching their children what the environment is all about. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is this beautiful thing which is people think they, they have rights but they, they that's it, they don't want to give back to the community. So if you see garbage on the floor, if you see uh, grass a little bit taller than usual, if you see something wrong, do it yourself. Don't depend on the municipality or anything like that. Take pride in what you do and show it. Be the example. Don't try to wait for other people to make things happen. Do it yourself. And that's the biggest, I think, example that we can take from your CID. Absolutely. And also, this is why we also believe that a clean area is a safe area. Um, because if this area is clean, the kids feel comfortable to shop with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, there was a lot of activity and also education we had to do. To walking past a, um, a pedestrian dustbin but putting the paper on the ground. So a lot of pamphlets went out to keep your city clean. and doing training, especially with the car guards as well, so that they could assist in keeping their areas where they are car guarding. We had a, um, a full program for the car guards um, in order that they had bibs. And I must tell you, their um, attitude towards the SID changed tremendously because all of a sudden we taught them on how to deal with the, the person that's doing shopping. 
And that's why they were earning more tips. Because they kept the area clean. The service that they the started. And the service they were providing. Because now they had a smile on their face. And not demanding anymore. Because you were able to give them skills. Go and now in right. order for them to apply. And by giving, investing on them, they gave back to the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Linda, very good. I love what you're doing. So, in terms of services, what people will take out of the CID? We're talking about cleaning, uh, uh, drug free streets, or a criminal free zone. So, enlighten us more in this matter. Um, it's not just the cleaning and greening and safe area. Um, we have got the, the post office where we have asked the citizens of Edinburgh, our residents of Edinburgh, come in the post office to draw their post. Some mm -hmm. do it at six o'clock in the morning, others do it at night coming out back from work. But what we also, and then of course we have got the community centre where our senior citizens go and have a lunch every day. There's a hairdresser there that does the senior citizens ladies hair. And um, so what we had to also look at, and we've got the library where the young children go. So what we did was we really looked at what we can provide there and when we did our um, investigations we found that the homeless people moved into the post office at night time which created a lot of our members and as well as residents that could not, were too scared to go and collect their post. Um, there was no garden or anything like that. So what the ESA did is we then went into access control where we put a fence around the, the post office. We cleaned all the post boxes. We repaired the windows that were cracked. We washed the walls. Uh, we made sure it was sanitized correctly and it had a good feel and a good smell and cleanliness smell. We then also did the garden where we created this beautiful little succulent garden with little benches where a senior citizen, is, while he's waiting for his wife to do the post, he could sit outside and look at the garden and talk to somebody. And And we found that a lot of the people, senior citizens were meeting and then having chats. The two husbands would wait for the two wives to come, or the two wives would wait for the two husbands to come back. So that also then created a safe environment to the residents fetching their post. We then also then went and looked at the, the community centre. The grass is high. Um, it doesn't look good on the outside. We were also concerned about senior citizens falling because there's a pothole or there's a pavement that's not level. And as we all know, if people fall sometimes with the senior citizens, they don't heal as what a young person would. So we then started doing the fixing of pavements, lifting them, making sure they were level, fixing curbs. And um, so then of course people felt we, the, the, there was an increase at the community centre because people, all of a sudden the gardens were pretty. Uh, there were no stumbling blocks. We removed the stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did at the post office as well. One thing that I, since I got here, one thing that I, that I, follow, that I find really interesting is the fact that you have uh, rubbish bins everywhere. Correct. Like you said, the pavement is even, you know. Uh, Every car guard that is helping you, you know, for example, parking the car, they have a, a bigger notion of what service delivery is, you know. You, I see people literally having, for example, a piece of paper on the street and they go and grab it and put it on, on the right place. Uh, the community works together. It's a, it's, it's a, a proper some symbiotic relationship it's like nothing that I haven't seen until now. It's just wonderful. You know what? Um, what we've also experienced that because the streets are clean and because the pavements are clean, uh, what happens is people walk and they're smoking. Mm. And all of a sudden they, they look around because they're not just going to throw it down. 
But if there was papers and grass and rubbish, they could have just flicker down. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, that's not, it's clean. They actually look for a place to extinguish a cigarette or to throw that piece of paper or sweet paper they have in their hand. Because it makes people more conscious if it's a clean area. And we find that is rubbing off. That's, that's, that's the, just the psychological effect of, of, of seeing streets clean it. It's like a completely amazing effect on people. Absolutely. That's, that's, that, that's the thing that I, I must say, we should adopt this not only here but throughout the country uh, for people being pride, you know. And uh, I, I'm, I'm literally, we are here, I'm looking outside and we have a rubbish bin day, you know. The, for example, the bag was just, it's a new bag day, it was just put there in order to, um, for people to, it's like, it's not abandoned. Quite right. You don't feel like things are abandoned. It seems like the, the, the structure is upgraded, everything is upgraded, you know, there is actually a, a business going on, you know. I went around with Linda, we, we saw a lot of activity, it's not even funny, it's not even funny. You, you guys come to this side of town, you think, to be there, no, it's completely the opposite, believe me. Like I'm showing you now, doing this interview, it's pretty well alive. And the more I come here, the more I can see it myself. And congratulations for that. And also the thing that we, as I said, what we're also doing with our cleaners, they are collecting 450 black bags a month of rubbish. But it doesn't just mean to pick up the rubbish, put it in the bag bags and go and dump it. We're now doing, from that we're doing recycling. So they would have their bags of grass and stone and sand, but in your other bags they would have the plastic, the glass bottles, the paper, which then comes to the back of the bakery, because he's got the recycling bins there, and we try and get that stuff into the recycling bins as well. Mm -hmm. And we, we're going to try and expand on that re recycling, because we're trying to get the communities to start recycling before they put their rubbish out. Mm. Because we've got these recyclers, yes. Um, a lot of us don't like them because they've got these big trolleys in the middle of the road. But they will remove the recyclables and they then in turn earn a living by selling the recyclables that we put separate. You guys see the cycle? Give back to the community, the community gives back to you. Okay. Creates livelihoods. And, and, and that's another curious thing. For example, we have literally around us a lot of businesses. For example, uh, this small restaurant and bakery. For example, how many people are they actually employing at the moment? Well, there must be 30. 30 Gosh. for only one business. Correct. That's, that's huge, eh? Yes, because one thing that people are always mentioning is the numbers of employment in South Africa. What about the business that already exists and they create, creating that consistency in terms of giving employment to people? Why are not these things being talked about? Why is only an employing rate so high? We need to see the small examples to see the bigger picture. That's just my opinion. Well, that's also one of our mottos and one, uh, one thing that we, we try and do as well, like our cleaning stock. It's a contract to a third party cleaning company. But our request to them was that they have to appoint local people from Edinburgh mm. so that the locals can get jobs and the local can feed their people. Their people. Um, and we've, we have done that in two precincts, a better new precinct as well as here in Edinburgh. And at least we are assisting the locals. Yes. And they are proud to be part of the change. Mm. And one thing that I love when people come and talk to Linda is the respect they have for Linda. It's just amazing. You gotta see you gotta see what I saw because it's people come to you literally and treated you like 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 you are a mother. You are yes. you are the people who helped them, you know. That's so nice and you know to see it, you know. So thank you very much for that. It's a pleasure. It's you. Either, you know, you can do anything you want as long as you've built the right relationships. Correct. Everything is human relationship. And it's not a dictator telling them you will do that. 
it's um, that relationship of let's do it together, let's yes. work together and let's do this let's together. Let me show you how to do it so how you know how it gets done. Okay. So you get your own independence so you don't depend on anyone. Exactly. That's brilliant. Okay. So one thing that I, another thing that I, that I think is very interesting to understand is what partnerships do you have in place to make the CID a success? Well, first of all, we have a very good partnership with SAPS. Uh, we also have a very good partnership with EMPD. EMPD, especially because of the bylaw infringements, um, ensuring that, and with uh, city planning as well, and health department, various departments within the Kuleni, to ensure that all bylaws are adhered to, that companies are registered correctly with um, CIRA, um, that they are registered with SARS. So, with those partnerships, we can create a an operation for whole one whole week, where we have all the departments, and we can on foot we go and make sure that everything is in place. So, so if I want to uh, open my own business here in the England by CID, are you going to guarantee me that I get all the um, services to be legal? Absolutely. and compliant with law, SARS and so on. We will assist you, we will assist you of exactly who to see, um, what to do, and so you know that when you start off from the beginning, okay. it is done correctly. And then of course the main one is um, our partnership with OneTrack, mm. um, which is the LPR and which LPR is for the Nava Patrick Commission and surveillance. Um, a couple of years ago we only had LPR cameras, uh, but we found now with one track dealing with Wimacam cameras, they um, you've got both. You've got the LPR as well as surveillance. So your uh, your response time is anything between two or three minutes because that control room is within the CBD. Anything suspicious that happens if it's night time and somebody wants to break a window of one of the shops to break in, the camera picks it up. So before anything can happen, the response is already sent out to go and see what's going on. And you guys will see this down in the video also. Uh, it basically put the security company uh, that is doing the surveillance of the Intervale CID into the video because at the end of the day, this is a documentary. So we need to see what we can cover to give you guys a little bit more insight and influence you in your province, in your city to do the same. With the introduction of this technology, the crime has dropped vastly. Because, uh, just to give you one incident, we had a gentleman that was full of drugs wielding a gun on the corner of the robot. Camera picked it up, sent the alert through, and within three minutes he was arrested by SAPS. Because SAPS works closely with the, the camera system. Yes, and, and the, the, these cameras are literally throughout the Intervals. They throughout the Intervals. In the city, uh, in the eastern area, we have 10. We have 10, so we do not have the crime and vehicles being stolen like we used to. That's crazy, yeah, yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense because we went and drive around, so I don't know. I, I picked up so many cameras, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just too many. <laughs> okay, so last one. Last question here, so thank you very much Leo, for all everything you're telling us. So, last question is, what are your plans for the expansion of the Indian Rail CID, please? Well, what we had to do with the expansion, so because obviously, like I said to you, that with the COVID, we lost a lot of um, businesses, which was sad, as well as we did have residential as well within our footprint. And we found a lot of people lost their jobs, so the residential can't contribute anymore. So we tried to now remodel it and expand our footprint according to the business needs. So going forward, we are going to extend the east side from um, 7th Avenue, because that's where it stops at the moment, um, seven, sorry, 7th Street, and we're going to go all the way up towards Greenstone. Um, offering a better service as well as to, to try and improve the um, aesthetics and the cleanliness drive 
that when we join up with the, the, um, the shopping centre in Greensland, that we can actually work together, mm. that it flows from one into the other. Okay, so how are you doing the expansion? So you're literally going every block to block and uh, speak with the businesses mm -hmm. and trying to incorporate them into your CID? Look, this is where we're now starting with our marketing um, drive as well, marketing um, strategies of getting a marketing team pamphlets, telling the people more about the ESID and uh, we're grateful that we've got um, this platform as well mm -hmm. to tell, like, especially to tell the new members more of who we are. There has been questions from the companies lower down and say why do when they get to a certain street everything is so beautifully nice and clean but down to their area it's not and um, I think you must have noticed that coming up down from the area you see all the islands look a bit bad and then all of a sudden it's good it's clean it looks fresh so we need to do it for all the businesses and already it, there's been such an interest shown and the um, with that interest being shown and with new businesses wanting to come back into here, it means that we are doing something right. Well, no, I've seen it myself. I, I've seen it myself. I'm, I'm a believer. So, so I don't have to convert you yet. You don't have to. <laughs> I saw it myself. I saw the pro I see. I saw the work. It, it's up to you guys to see. Just drive up here in Edenville, Edenville CID, and you guys will be able to see it for yourself. I, I've seen it, I'm documenting it, so all this is true, guys. Again, thank you very much, Linda, thank for this so part much. of the documentary. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to learn a little bit more. Thank you. Hi, guys. So this is the other part of the interview, which we're going to speak with Clayton. Clayton is one of the private investors here in the Edenvale CID. And Clayton, we went or you took me around to see the stores, to see the community, to see the apartments. And the cool thing about this is, I feel actually at home because Clayton created a feel-good community environment here. Uh, you literally can live in CID, walk across the road and go to a beauty saloon, to go to the bakery, to go to a restaurant, you know what I mean? You can have your business just here in one of the facilities and that's so amazing, you know Clayton. Uh, by the way, thank you very much for coming to the show, I really appreciate to hear your story and see what you did here, which is just as the wow factor. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and this take us to the beginning, to the roots of how everything started. So when you came here and you started to invest in property, what was what was the idea for the investment? Where you started? Let's put it this way. So um, I'm born and bred in Edenville. Been here many, many years. My parents have uh, offices in Edenville. So when we looked to improve Edenville, it was uh, more from the heart and uh, we looked to improve the town as a whole. Edenville is a very unique town because it's one of the formerly decayed towns that is surrounded by affluent areas, which is very unique to see. And the good always creeps in, that's what I believe. So the affluent areas that surround us like Bedford View, Greenstone and all of them, they cater for their markets. But Edenville has become different. We cater for a completely different market in terms of retail and in terms of residential. And it's a little more cost effective. And we just like to give our community something great to live in. And that was the, the basis of it. Well, it's like I say, I was, I was, when you come here, you just feel like, okay, I don't know what is going on. But then when I actually start to talk to you guys and I feel like, wow, I can actually, you know, thinking of, moving myself here and have my business here and all that. So, you know, I feel, I, feel, I actually feel empowered to help the community, to be inserted into the community, which is such an amazing feeling, guys. Clayton, this take us to our next question, which is, what was your biggest investment in the Edenvale CID? Sure, that's a, that's a good question. So, um, our investments in the CBD are not just buying and upgrading property there's uh, what we do is we also infiltrate into upgrades within the community and the infrastructure within the town to give it that feel-good feeling when you come and visit us and um, once the projects for the building are actually done we continue to spend on the aesthetics and actually creating a linked holistic environment for everything to work together 
So I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, yes, it makes a lot of sense. Look, if you guys think about it, if you have property, why are you going to demolish the property and redo it? Okay, so in some cases, sometimes you need to demolish it. Yeah. But if you have already existing infrastructure, upgrade it, exactly. change the pipes, uh, put new tiles, put a new roof. So the investment doesn't become like very big. Mm -hmm. But it's it's you can do it in a very sustainable way. Absolutely. And then you rent the place, you help the community like you did. You created all these businesses. You know, I literally can go on that side of the road and I have everything. You do. Even the cell phone shop. Uh, do you have a? You need to add to add a computer shop. You have also. Yes, we got so, a computer shop. They got everything. I don't have any <laughs> ideas to give them. I don't know. Okay guys, so if you guys like these videos, you need to understand that CIDs are kind of a great place to keep your investment because you got people that are managing these areas privately. So this takes us to this question, Clayton. What is for you the safest investment in a CID? Sure, so there, there isn't really a safe investment. There isn't really a safe investment anyway. But uh, I think what uh, helps us to sleep at night is that we invested in the community. And the Edenvale CBD is a very unique community because the way that we've integrated the businesses, a lot of the business help the other businesses and they feed off one another's clientele. And that's very unique to see businesses helping businesses in this day and age. So our community is very tightly knit and that's the way we like it you know we uh, we like to put certain shops next to certain shops so when the clientele walks through we provide them as you were saying earlier we provide them with an experience you can find everything on our block and that's what we like we're a one-stop Edenvale shop so this takes us to the next question Clayton which is how do you make sure that your investment is safeguarded in the Edenvale CID so our recipe was uh, to invest our money in three things. Mm. One, like I said before, was the community. Two was security within the town. And three were the aesthetics of the town. People want to come to somewhere that's clean. And for example, when we started 10 years ago, um, we were basically renting out rooms. People didn't want to live in Edenville. It was just because it was convenient that they would stay in the town. Now, three, for the last three years, we are inundated with family requests for family units because people have seen the change in the town and they want to raise their kids here. And this is what we've been working so hard to change the mindset about what our CBD is about. So the families that are now moving here, they're integrating into the communities, they're using local schools, they're shopping locally, they're eating at our restaurants. And the whole wheel is now ignited and turning because the community that has moved here is reinvesting within the community that was here. And that's so important because that's how we create sustainability. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, guys, I also want to show you guys the apartments fully furnished with everything, Wi-Fi, fiber. I will show you now, guys, you guys will be amazed with the apartments. Um, yeah, and then you send me all the links. Absolutely. So we can uh, show that to, to people. So let's go and see because it's mind blowing once again. Hope you guys enjoy. Just make sure you subscribe and support the Eden Vale CID development and the initiative. That will be the best way to use it. Thank you. Okay, guys. So in this next part of the interview here on the Eden Vale CID, we're going to speak about security. So we have these two gentlemen who take care of the security in the area. So can you guys introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm Dean, uh, owner of OneTrack. Um, we own property here in Edenville. We service our community. Uh, we're a tracking and an off-site monitoring company. Um, we also partner with VumaCam. We do the East Rand area with the VumaCam project for LPR and abnormal behavior. Um, yeah, so we residents of Edinburgh. Okay, hi, my name is Joshua. I'm a reaction officer working within the Edinburgh area. Um, I'm basically doing all our clients' uh, alarms, panic alarms within the area. Uh, I also uh, respond to LPR camera hits through the Woman camera system uh, in the Edinburgh area. And I also do uh, Tracker SA recoveries. So if Tracker SA have a stolen vehicle or a verification, um, I help them by going out. 
and basically either recovering the vehicle or just verifying that everything is okay. So now that we know Dean and Joshua, first question, how do you keep Edenville CID a criminal free zone? Okay, so, so firstly, we have the big camera project. So I, I think our strategy for Edenville at large is prevention better than cure. So we work a little bit different from, from other um, institutes, security companies and so on. We're not reactive, we're proactive. So we try to prevent instead of reacting to a scene. So the camera project, the smart camera project, it's second to none. It helps us catch criminals before they commit crime. So um, we have cars that come into the area. We have people of interest that come into the area. These cameras give us alerts and triggers and it comes to our control room. Our control room dispatches to our reaction members and tactical teams on the ground. And we approach these people and we get them uh, verified and profiled by SAPS. We have a good alliance with EMPD, SAPS, um, Flying Squad and um, Highway Patrol. So when it comes to stolen cars, Highway Patrol intervene. When it comes to members um, that are involved in petty crime, uh, we get either male SAPS involved. When it comes to high speed chases and all of that, we have Flying Squad to assist us. And EMPD is based in the area, so they are also here to assist us with whatever queries in terms of uh, illegal gatherings, if somebody's occupying the property without permission. So squatters, vagrants, you know, they're very active in making sure that we keep the city clean. But do you want to add anything, Joshua? I think uh, Dean basically said everything that needs to be said. Um, but yeah, just basically what he said, it, we can't, can't emphasize how important this camera system actually is. and. The, when I when I, if I can give you a time frame between the person getting the camera and myself as reaction officer on the ground getting that information, we're talking 45 seconds to a minute. I can get that information and I can start heading to that direction. So it's very very vital, very important. Yeah. Very very interesting. Very look, interesting. look to be to, to to elaborate about the cameras itself. People are now avoiding Eden Bay uh, due to the fact that. A camera is going to trigger them or, or pick them up um, and it's no, no longer we looking for a number plate we can look for a gentleman in a one track shirt we can look for a gentleman in an Uzi shirt that's in a car that the camera will pick you up that's so so for example we have an armed robbery a gentleman wearing a Uzi jacket jumps into a car we don't have the car registration but we can search Uzi and it will you know red flag a passenger uh, in car XYZ GP is wearing an Uzi jacket. So our our alliances with, with other security companies and uh, other tracking companies out there depends on the camera system. Because even when it comes to track, tracking vehicles, um, when a car is stolen and hijacked, that tracking unit is compromised within five minutes of it being stolen or hijacked. Now we have the cameras that can take over because the tracking units are compromised. And uh, we've seen a drop in the area due to the fact of all these uh, LPR or smart camera systems around. Then the other big thing is visible policing. Um, and once again, prevention is better than cure. We've got fancy cars, uh, good high performance cars. So getting to our clients, our response times are second to none. It's, it's one of we are in the area, so everything's under two, three minutes, you know. Um, so that's also is a deterrent to people that's trying to commit crime. We had a few tests where people check our response time before they commit crime, and then they realize, okay, these guys come out with fancy GTIs and, and you know Golf Sevens and so on and so forth. So we're not your average security out there that's coming out with uh, a deaths and go, for example. Uh, we make sure our response time is within that three minutes response period. Very good, very good, very impressive. Very good. Great, great. Uh, so guys, this takes us to the second question, which I'm very interested to know. You guys touched a little bit in these things. What are the red flags? What, do, what type of crime do you guys deal with to, to have an idea? So there's a lot of petty crime. 
and we have a lot of cell phone theft, which is common, I think, across South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, you're at a restaurant, somebody comes across, grabs your phone off your ear, or off the table, and he makes a run for it. So we have a lot of a lot of cell phone crime, and, and it's across the country at large. It's just not even mail. Um, red flags are uh, gentlemen or even women that are loitering around a restaurant or an intersection where people will bang a glass. It's called a smashing grab grab a, a bag or a cell phone and leave. So for us, once again, our cameras tell us that this two or three gentlemen or, la or ladies are in an intersection and we go check it out. So once again, we believe in prevention better than cure. We approach them, why are you here for the last half an hour? Or why are you here for the last hour? Look, one of our big problems are beggars in the area and they are eyes and ears for criminals. So they, they, they're the scouts, as you'd say. Um, that's a red flag. You'll notice uh, when a new beggar comes to your area, something's odd. Um, and, it, and it's inevitable. It's happening across our country, across Africa at large. People are poverty stricken. So they, they resort to crime to sustain a livelihood or to survive. Unfortunately for them and, and, and our residents is that we have to combat crime. So as much as they are in survival mode, crime is not the way of the future. So red flags is if we have people that are loitering around an intersection or a mall or a restaurant uh, for more than 10 minutes is a red flag for us. Because, and especially if someone's walking, pacing up and down, you can, you can see he's up to something in the sense that he's, he's scouting. Then when it comes to vehicles, we have two or three males in a vehicle that drives in the same area more than five minutes. You know, you're either lost or you're scouting. Um, once again, the camera system red flags it and we go out and we have a chat to them. Um, five out of ten times, it's somebody that's lost, and the other five times, we, in our own way, have stopped the crime from taking place. Um, when it comes to vehicles, people that drive with their sun visors down is a red flag because they don't want to be seen in terms of their faces. Um, and if you can, if you look at a car that's got two or three gentlemen in the car and the sun visors are down, dark tint where you can't see in, it's a red flag, it's, it's a car of interest, we need to keep an eye on it. Uh, we use the term a suspicious car and we check it out. Uh, unfortunately for us at this moment, lots of crimes are committed by Uber vehicles um, in the area and in South Africa. So a criminal takes an Uber, Uber is innocent, the poor driver drives them around, they jump out the car, they steal a handbag, a cell phone, they jump back in the Uber and they tell him drive. Unfortunately, those guys are armed. That Uber driver has to take them and drop them off, you know, five kilometers away. So that's our big problem because vehicles of interest that run through the system always end up back to an Uber vehicle. So we've now taken the initiative where we're going to impound these vehicles because they are used in the commission of crime. So that they can now go back to their app and say, but this person took the Uber on that day. Or this driver, because Uber cars have multiple drivers. So now this driver used the vehicle there. So it's, a, it's another syndicate that we're working on behind the scenes. Um, but it's a problem that we face because you cannot identify an Uber vehicle. It's, it's, it's not like your, your average taxis. You know, they've got signages, they've got a taxi number, an association number. Uber cars are all the same and, and you get an Uber license and you're out there. So that's a problem. Then the other big thing that we have is a concept called clone plates. So they would take a number plate from a resident, make it up and put it on their car and commit crime. So that's a big problem in our area. But however, the red flag comes up once again to the smart camera system when a XYZ GP belongs to a Toyota Corolla white comes across in a BMW red which does not match. So that's a red flag for us. So we need to, it's false plates and it's clone plates.
Very nice, very nice. Very interesting to understand all these insights into what is actually being done. I don't know if you want to add anything. No, just from a point of actually being on the streets, you know, obviously I'm not in the, the control room with the camera system and monitoring. So the information that we get, um, obviously we can respond from that. They'll give us uh, information or they'll send it to our phones and, you know, this is the problem with the vehicle, go check it out. But from terms of just patrolling around, um, like Dean said, you know, if you see somebody, normal, your normal people on the street, they're work, walking with a purpose, they're going somewhere. You'll get these people, as Dean said, loitering around, they don't really look like they're having a purpose, they're looking around a lot. Those people with red flags. Same with the vehicles. If you get a vehicle driving up and down in a residential area, for instance, the avenues, what is he doing? Mm -hmm. He's either an Uber looking for somebody, which is also a problem, or he's lost, like the insect, um, or he's a criminal looking for an opportunist, uh, somebody pulling into their driveway, something like that. So, you know, for us as well, it's on the ground. I mean, people who don't have purpose, looking suspicious, as Dean said, trying to cover their faces, it's all very big red flags. Watch them, see what they do, approach them. If approaching them 90% of the time already, as Dean said, it stops the crime there because now I've been seen. Somebody from security has come and spoken to me. So that already puts them on their back heels. They don't want to do anything. So, yeah. It's interesting to see that the majority of your, of your work is basically watching human behavior happening. That's correct. So Absolutely. you guys can prevent situation. Great. Look, another big red flag in shopping malls and parking lots is reverse parking. So most criminals will reverse park. They put the sun visors down and they're sitting low in the car. That's your first red flag. So we always advise the car guards, um, mall security. When you see this, you know, bring it to our attention so that we can come across and approach them. Uh, once again, it's a prevention scenario because if we wait for it to happen, you know, uh, and then attack them or, or engage in them, then you got in innocent bystanders in terms of shoppers and civilians and kids and and, and families that are in arms way. So when we see this. You know, a person reverse park and going to the shop is one thing, but when you reverse park and you're sitting in the car, that means you are scouting. So that's that's another big red flag that um, we always approach and, and try to, to intercept before a crime is being committed. Perfect, thank you. Very interesting what, 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 how impactful your work is, but now let's talk about numbers. When I speak about numbers is, since you guys working here on the Edenvale CID, how much, if you have to put this in a percentage from 0 to 100, how criminality uh, numbers dropped? Look, um, I can say more than 50%. You know, we've had uh, a laptop being stolen out a shop in three months that has come up. We've had We've not had a, we've had a shooting at um, pick and pay uh, in an armed robbery after six months, you know. Um, we've not had cars stolen from the CBD itself. Um, around in the quieter areas, yes, there's been carpet, but I think in, in the city itself, it, it's dropped down more than 50%. That's amazing. And to have an idea, uh, does the community, for example, the community, they also already, their eyes are trained to spot these people. So, so yeah. before you guys come, does the community already done anything to these petty criminals or whatever? Look, when they have the opportunity, the, of course. The, the community is very active in the, in the sense that they don't want crime in the area. Um, and look, when we say the community of the CBD, it's mostly businessmen. So businessmen and their staff are very proactive in the fact that um, they don't want to lose customers because of crime. So they're trained or they are briefed that they, the eyes and ears to people like us that respond to give them assistance. So if there's a petty crime, I can assure you that 80% of the time they already caught the suspect as we approach. Um, you know, in that light. Um, so that's also helping combating crime because uh, they let the authorities know and they apprehend the suspect and, and we get out there and, and we wait for SAPs to come out and we have the suspect's profile and then we figure out they lead to a whole lot of housebreakings and a whole lot of other petty crimes. So, you know, it's a, it's a ripple effect. 
where it's it's a circle, you know, and everybody adds to the piece of the circle. So yes, I think the community stroke businessmen are very involved, and the good thing is um, they actively involved because you know it's vested interest. You got to protect your 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 investment. Like for us, for example, we own our property. We don't rent it. Um, we are a paying, rate paying resident of the Eastern area. So um, from our side, and hence we're so active, is I want to bring our market value up. So hence we're so proactive and we want to bring crime down. So the lower the crime, the higher the value of your property. Um, so we want to be actively involved, you know, and this is uh, ESIT, our CSI project, where we, it's our give back to the community, you know. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much, also Joshua, for your input. We basically during this interview, you guys are going to see various clips of us on the street. So I'm going to basically go with them just to see a little bit of the background of what was done. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I don't know if you want to add anything else. No, we good. We good. <laughs> This one. You are Hi, I'm Kushen from Ultimate Performance. We're proud to be Alliance Business Alliance partners with One Track. We provide service, maintenance and repairs to all their vehicles as well as the performance upgrades that ensure that they're reliable, quick response and faster than the bad guys ready to catch them. Now we're going to speak with Mark. Mark is one of the business owners here in the Edenvale CID. Hi Mark, how are you? Fine you. I'm Mark's very good. good. Great, thank you very much. So Mark, first question, what are the advantages of a business owner inside of, a, of, a, of the, in this case, the Edenvale CID? Well, from my side and from my company side, obviously, um, we've been here 30 years. We've seen the, we were here in the heydays and even though it was a bustling little town, but over the last couple of years, we've seen the de degradation of Edenville itself. Thank goodness we, my dad was involved with the starting up of the CID with a couple of other people. And the advantage was that we, the place has kept clean. We've stopped the going backwards of the town we are now moving forwards. Uh, we, I'm getting better quality tenants. And if later on in the videos, you'll see what we've actually done here in Edenvale. But the CID is an enhancement of what we do ourselves. We look after our own plants a little bit, but the CID does the, the basic area, the bigger areas and the public areas in the town. Mm -hmm. Keeps it safe, secure, and... So, Mark, second question. Why should businesses pay levies inside of a city improvement district or a CID? Well, the enhancements that the city improvement district does enhances it for your shops, your tenants, and the greater area in Edenvale. To bring people back into Edenvale and to enhance the area and to keep it going. You know, we went through tough times with COVID. We're all in the recovery now. I always said we carry on paying our levies no matter what. It's part of our advertising, it's not just for our business, it's part of the costs to run the business in Edenvale. You've got to factor that in. We don't always get the services we want from the council and this is all enhanced services to pay and to keep your businesses running. We need a clean area and a safe area to survive and that's what in all businesses and this is what the SIP does. Mm -hmm. So basically by doing this it maintains the sustainability of the CID or the CID? De definitely. As an organization. As an organization, I've always said, yeah, we've got to carry on paying. And I'm, I'm very impressed with what we've managed to do so far in the last eight to ten years, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, I, I would call it tenants and I would enjoy where I stay. And I, I, I live in Edenville and I love my area and I love my town. Perfect. Mark, great, thank yeah. you for your, all your experience until now. So, our third question is, what advice do you have for private business owners that intend yeah. to invest in, um, in, in, in Edenvale CID? Okay, if you, we, we, we invested already 
50 years ago in this, in this in Edenville, we bought this building. And we've slowly but surely upgraded our building as opportunity arose to upgrade and to get better quality tenants. Mm -hmm. For me, quality tenants, if you're a landlord, is very, very important. You need to have, and the right mix. If you have too many restaurants, it doesn't help either. If you have too many other hairdressers, if you have too many of this, too many of that, we've got to get a decent mix in Eden Valley again to get it up and running. And that is also dependent on what are you as a landlord willing to, shops are you willing to have in your center? I'd rather have a shop standing empty for two, three months and have a decent quality tenant who brings people back into Edenvale. Mm -hmm. Edenvale has always been a service <coughs> orientated uh, sh shopping area for the last 15 years since the big supermarkets moved out of Edenvale. Okay, we have the pick and pay and we have the um, net bank and all the big banks down the bottom. But we need to get the big centers back in the big shops back into Edenville and to do that as well we've got to offer quality space quality tenants surrounding and supporting each other very good, very good. mark last yes. question so as a business owner what would you like to see implemented in the Edenville cid in the future okay i'd like to see a closer working with council council supporting us more Ekuleni, Metro, the whole government department must be behind us more. Mm -hmm. Actually deliver on these services mm -hmm. so we can still enhance our services to support the shops in the area. It's, we just, I just find that we have a last year since the DA took over, we have found more positive feedback coming from council, getting feedback from what is happening and things that they are trying to implement to enhance Edenville. Edenville's always been a very, was a, I always say it was a cash cow for Ekuleni. We had a high percentage of paying people. And the last couple of years, we haven't had the service delivery we expected for that. Mm -hmm. Which now we seem to be the turnaround point with the new, uh, after the last elections. And I'm hoping that we can enhance this so we can get Edenville better, secure, cleaner, and a town that is vibrant again. Perfect. Yeah. And as you guys can see on this video, yeah. it's quite blatant. If you pause, you see that a lot of work has been done in terms of security. Uh, you have people everywhere doing their jobs, you know, the streets are clean yeah. and everything. So let's see what we can do. At least more people will know about the Edenville CID and you guys can come and visit and help the economy of Edenville itself. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having us. Alright guys, so this is the end of the video and the most magnificent thing about this project is the fact that every South African comes together to give their contribution into this amazing project, you know. And uh, thank you again for everyone that was involved in this video, really appreciate your time and to make this happen. Uh, anyway guys, you share, you like, you subscribe and you destroy that like button and I will see you in the next Living in SATV video.